One of the key issues I've had in my research is that I'm dealing with um, crime data. Now, crime data is specifically listed as one of the classes of sensitive data under the Data Protection Act. So if that crime data might um, in some way disclose details of an individual, then you might find yourself in breach of the Data Protection Act, in breach of various confidentiality issues and so on. So you need to be very careful and um, think about how you're going to use that data. Um, and obviously a key issue for the police, if they were going to agree to give me their data, is that they had to be confident that I was going to keep their data safe and that, um, again, I wouldn't disclose details about individual locations of crimes or individual people who might have been offenders or victims of crimes that they didn't want to disclose themselves, never mind the sort of legal side of, of, of the Data Protection Act as well. So one of the things I've had to think very carefully about is how can I get the data at that specific location which I need because I want the flexibility of being able to um, basically aggregate it, shape it, map it or whatever scale I want to as part of my analysis stage and how can I then um, make the data suppliers, in this case the local police force, confident that when I finally get around to publishing that data it will be suitably anonymised. Um, so what I did with the police was to um, write a very detailed project proposal which set out um, clearly what the research was that I was going to do with them, um, what um, I was hoping to do with the data that they were going to give me, why I wanted the data that I wanted. And the other thing I also did was to ask for the minimum data that I um, actually needed. Now, I'm interested in the locations that vandalism happens at. I'm not interested in other crimes, so I didn't ask for details of other crimes. I just asked for the data about the crime I was in crimes I was interested in. Um, I'm also not interested in directly, because I'm particularly looking at aspects of place in my research, in who actually does the offences or who's the victim of it. So I didn't need any data, any names of offenders or victims. I did need the location. Now the police happen to actually record a specific location, they call it locus, which they record as a grid reference, an, an easting or, and, and a northing, um, which will actually give you a precise point you can locate on the map. Um, they also have a full, regress, full address and quite often postcode. So given I could get for every, almost every crime a location and or a postcode, um, that meant that um, I didn't actually need to get the full address from them. So that had the advantage that they knew that I was getting from them the minimal amount of data, and that was the minimal amount of data that I felt I could use. And I think because I was able to set out, well, this is the minimum amount of data that I can use, they, they were more confident about giving me the data. I didn't just say, give me everything that you've got. I said, well, actually, what I specifically need is, is this information. Can I keep it with you like that? Second thing I did was make it very clear I was going to store the, um, the data securely. Now, um, I do that by using the university servers where there's, there are regular backup systems and secure data storage systems. I also make use of an encryption program, which is an, an off-the-shelf encryption package called Pretty Good Privacy, or PGP um, Desktop, which um, is, is one of the industry standards for encryption packages and produces a sort of virtual encrypted disk for you, which is a file you can sort of keep in various places. And I was able to detail that and explain that, which means that the data is actually encrypted and has a second level of password beyond my university password. And again, I was able to detail that and explain that to them. So they could be confident the data was going to be secure. I also set out the backup systems that would be in place because some data I keep on my laptop but also back up at home. Um, so I made clear what the backup systems that were going to be used. I also made clear the sort of levels of data I was going to keep where. So some data I have is very detailed and it does have the location of each crime. It also has a crime number so if I ever had any particularly surprising results I could go back and say this particular record is giving me these very odd results. Is there something odd about it? Can you tell me a bit more? And I have a named contact I can go back to. Again, having a named contact with the organisation you're dealing with if you're taking your data from, especially with something like sensitive and precise data, I think is very helpful. So if you should run into any problems, you've got someone to go back to. And if necessary, if you haven't asked for all the data to start with, you could always go back and ask for more detail if you really find you need it. So in some ways, asking for well, you need to sort of be starting out asking for enough data that you can get what you need, but not so much data that 
it's starting to think, well, why, why do you need that level of information? So the third level I did was to guarantee that before I showed the data to anyone else, or even before it actually gets taken off the most secure place in the university data, data set, I would anonymise it in some way. Now, I've anonymised it in a couple of different ways. Um, one is I've taken out the actual um, grid location completely um, and just given it a unique identifier. And also, for each of those grid locations, given it instead a point that's higher up. So I've said, well, this this particular sorry, this uh, particular point location is in this 100 meter grid I've created, or this output area, or whatever. So I store those, but I don't any more store the location. I also ready aggregate the data up to a level, certain levels, so you can no longer actually see the precise house or location where it's occurring at. I also use a data smoothing um, technique called kernel of density estimation, which what it effectively does is rather than having exactly where the point is, it spreads the points out a bit. Um, it sort of fuzzifies the data to put it non, non, in a sort of non-technical non way. Um, so where you've got the, the biggest concentrations of crime, you'll get um, a heavier, a, a sort of greater weight if you map it, it becomes darker, often known as heat maps. Where you've got lesser concentrations of crime, you, you get sort of um, a lighter density. So when you map that, that looks like a lighter colour. Um, and it has the effect of kind of weighting the data um, towards where the concentrations of it are, and effectively it sort of moves the points about a bit. I mean, I, I, you also display the data at a grid level rather than individual point level, so again that anonymizes it out. So I'm anonymizing the data by um, sort of either smoothing or aggregation, and that's a way of, sh of sort of dealing with the sensitive data in, in, in that way. Um, and what I did for the police was although I didn't actually have their data yet, I took a data set which would behave a bit like the police data and the data set I used in this case is postcode data where you get individual locations of postcodes. And I showed what the sort of smoothing and aggregation techniques would look like. So I produced um, a, a, a series of maps which sort of said, this is what it looks like as a point and this is then what happens when I, instead of mapping it like points, I map it using these various aggregation techniques. I also showed them the scale I was likely to show the data at, which I think is about 1 to 85,000, um, or possibly 1 to 50,000, but I think I've been generally using 1 to 85,000, so for the area I was looking at, so they could actually get a view of, once I transform their location points, um, what that data would look like. And once they had all that information, how I was going to store the data securely, how I was going to take steps to anonymise it, what that might look like when that was anonymised, that put that all in um, location, presented it to the data manager. The data manager said, yep, fine, you can have the data. And actually, the, um, the, 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 the police officer contact I'd had was quite surprised how easily they'd agreed. But I think actually the fact I had all that detail that says, this is how I'm going to store your data, this is the sort of things I might do with your data, this is what it might look like, I think then gave them the confidence that um, uh, th that I would be sort of looking after the data securely and thinking about how I would maintain it. The other thing they were quite pleased about, and this is another requirement of the Data Protection Act, is that I also stated how long I would hold the very detailed confidential data. In my case, I said I would hold it up to, for up to five years after the research project finished. And they felt it was very important that I'd actually thought about how long I'd actually be holding that data for. I said I'd be holding the aggregate data potentially much longer than that, but the actual very detailed, potentially sensitive disclosive data, again, I made it very clear how long I'd be holding that data. I also made it clear who else would potentially get to see that, which in my case are sort of my supervisors, and that's been very important because I've been discussing various levels of analysis. I haven't had any concern about showing my supervisors very detailed information some of the time because my data suppliers knew that potentially I'd be discussing this with my supervisors and they potentially would have access to this very detailed data, although they never have, but it means I don't have to worry when I'm doing initial maps of the data that I might be showing them exactly where some of these crimes are located so we're having general discussions about how the research is going. I don't have to be quite so careful about the information I, I put up. And on my own laptop, even though a lot of the data I'm dealing with isn't sensitive, anything I think might sensitive I leave in, in another encrypted file. It just makes me feel happier and safer that you know, if for some reason my laptop got found or lost or whatever, there's no danger of anything going out that I think is anyway disclosive. So that all keeps it sort of... I'm confident that I'm not going to breach any any rules, I'm not going to upset my data supplier. They're confident I can use their data.